up tank nerds, Lottie here. If you have read the title of this video, you will know we got the Merlin Meteor going. I'm going to play the video right now and then we will have a discussion about it afterwards. Ready? Obviously, uh, it didn't blow up as we are still here. So uh, when I show the engine in a second, you'll notice that it's a little bit different. That's because we tested it in the morning. It's now the afternoon. We've done quite a bit more work to it. So um, really, really, really good news. Uh, the timing is perfect. Ignition is perfect. We've got fuel. We've got combustion, uh, compression, spark, all that jazz. Really good. During that video, we did not have the water hooked up to it, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but yeah, more or less, that is a complete running engine. So I will show what it looks like now and what we're doing. Here is the Merlin Meteor. Obviously, the in the last video that you saw, that wasn't attached. Uh, that is the water tank. Uh, that's the oil tank, um, and Peter in the interim has made up a little handle for the uh, throttle. So uh, beyond that, everything else is exactly as it was in the video this morning. Um, you can see we've got nice combustion happening, nice big blue flames. I know in the video you would have seen a fair bit of white smoke coming out of the side. The day before, we um, we turned it over just to get oil all the way through. And we got about uh, 20 psi of pressure just cranking the engine over without starting it. Um, just filling all the oil galleries, making sure we have oil everywhere. Of course, when you do that, you're going to get a little bit of oil uh, inside the combustion chamber. So that's what that white smoke is. Uh, it's already cleared away, which is really good. So we're happy about that. Um, another good news is that we aren't getting any blowback because we actually haven't fitted these. Um, these are just, uh, these are this pipe here and that one there. They feed into a T-piece here. We will sort them out, um, but essentially they're just a breather. Um, and if you get any blowback, then it'll come out there. Not a problem. Um, because we ran it and obviously nothing has come out of it, which is really good. Okay, uh, what else is there to talk about? Uh, we've got full full oil, water. So we've only just installed the water uh, this afternoon. We generally don't like to run these without water and that's not because it's gonna overheat or anything. This engine, as it is, will never reach uh, operating temperature. It's really bad to do these for any great period of time, uh, and that is because they don't have a flywheel. We'll get to that in a second. But you should still run water because we are running the water pump. Now, without the without water in the water pump, it can it can cause damage to the impeller. They're designed to run in water, so without that resistance, uh, can can cause harm to them. That goes for all water pumps. So if you're running a water pump without water, stop it right now and put water in it. That's how you're supposed to do it. But yeah, that's why we're gonna hook up the water system just because we're running that. Honestly, if we didn't have that, you wouldn't have to run water in this because again, it's not gonna be running that long. Coming down here, you'll see this yellow plate here. This is where uh, all your power comes out of. 
Obviously, there's nothing in it, and this is why we cannot run the engine for any more than a couple of minutes, which we're unlikely to do anyway. So you need, for all engines, you need a flywheel to help load up the engine. Without that, um, you get violentness <laughs> happening within the crankcase, and we don't want that to happen. Uh, it's okay doing it for just short periods of time, but once you rev them up hard and long, you can cause irreparable damage in here, and we don't want that to happen. On the aircraft version of these, or this, the predecessor for this engine, uh, obviously that is where your propeller would go, um, and the propeller acts as a flywheel. On the tank version, which this one is, goes into that tank, uh, there is a quarter-ton clutch that hangs off the front here, um, or back, whichever way you want to describe it. In the tank, this is the back. Um, but yeah, there's a quarter-ton clutch, and that acts as the flywheel. Uh, obviously, we don't have a quarter-ton clutch hanging off this engine at the moment, because that is just silly. Um, and you really can't make up any sort of proper flywheel, not with the... Um, the pulley system attached. So that's why this engine will not reach operational temperature on the stand. If I can, I'll show you what the clutch looks like. We'll go around here. Ugh, crawling down. Oh look, here's another one that I prepared earlier. Uh, shine the light. Okay. That right there is the clutch. And it bolts on to the back. I don't know if you can just see that. Those three little dots. I don't know if you can quite see that. The little dots in the back there. That's part of the clutch. And it connects through here. But yeah. That is, um, that's the engine. Pretty much, pretty much done. Uh, obviously we've got to clean it up a little bit, put, uh, attach some final hose, hoses. We haven't put water in it yet. Uh, and that's just because while we are running it this way, we're not running the entire water system. You'll see on this engine, which I'll show again. Um, uh, where are we? <laughs> So part of the water system, which is this one here, um, actually goes to the auxiliary generator. Uh, there are more little bits and pieces. In fact, some of the oil heads over that way too. So we've had to block off um, a fair bit of it. But the main one is down there. So you see that silver pipe underneath it? Well, we have to block that one off on that engine as well. Uh, so that's what we've been doing. Uh, likewise, with the water pump, we've actually blocked one side off. Um, don't know if I can show it from here now. Uh, that little black piece there. That's one side of the water pump. Uh, normally, these run on rails. The water system runs on rails that the, t that the engine sits on. We'll crawl down here. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, it all looks pretty well identical to the engine outside. Um, here's our water pump in the back, and here is the hose. So this is what you call the water rail. It is also what the engine sits on. Um, we've blanked this one off. Uh, not not on this one. On the other time, on the other engine, um, because we don't need to use both. There's this duplicated on the other side over there but I can't crawl in there at the moment um so yeah we've had to block those ones off but yeah looking good um likewise we've also we don't have another oil cooler we're still actually the oil cooler is fixed for this one so we have still going to install that uh because it's not getting up the temperature no point in using the uh using an oil cooler. That's what that hose on along the top, the black and orange one is for. It's basically just to return. Um, let's crawl back over. So 
So here we go. Here's our water pump. We've blocked that one off. So we can't use it because again, we just need water in there. We don't need to actually really pump it around efficiently. Uh, it's just to preserve this. Uh, but this is our makeshift water rail all the way up to our water tank. Um, and then, yeah, flows through. There is a thermostat in here. Not that it's gonna get a workout at all. Uh, and we need a block off this one. And this is where the temp gauge normally goes. Again, we're not gonna be running it up to temperature. So running a temp gauge is redundant. Um, yeah. I think that is about it. Just trying to think if there's anything else. No, everything is going pretty good with the engine. Um, but yeah, lots of little bits and pieces to get on with. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sort all that out later. So there you have it. Um, that is the Merlin Meteor properly restored. That is a full nut and bolt restoration. Uh, if you look at the thumbnail for this video, you'll see the old one. Um, and I'll probably insert something later on when I do a full run through of the engine. Uh, but yeah, it's, we got this engine as basically a graveyard piece. <laughs> it didn't look much better than the other one we've got. I'll show that actually while I've got you. So this, this is not too dissimilar to how the other engine, that engine used to look. So we've scavenged parts of this one and the other one, and we have made one fantastically good, original, lovely Centurion Meteor engine. So there you have it. Um, hit like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I don't like having to say it, but it does really good for the algorithm. Um, we will only have about one, maybe two weeks left with this particular tank. If there is anything you want me to cover on it, um, besides the gunnery and all that, which I am doing, um, let me know, uh, because it will be a while, I think, before we can do anything else on this. On this tank, it has all the bells and whistles. So the owner is fairly happy with how everything's going. Um, but yeah, if there is anything you want me to do on it, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and by all means, ask questions and I will try to get to them. See you on the next one. Bye.